Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. Wanted to do an update video about the supposed asteroid threat for this weekend. Chris Wapner asks, what were these explosions? You certainly did rightly give Steve at WSO lots of flack, and here he does it again. Your thoughts on what this is? So, I'm going to show you guys what he's referring to, and then show you guys what is really going on. Um, Jake, you're right. Look, look what he catches going on at the bottom. Right. There's there's plenty going on in the middle here, guys. <laughs> there's plenty going on. Look at this, Steve. Are those the explosions from the Russian United States missions? Look at this. I mean... So go check out my previous video if you want the full story. But basically, this claim all got started on littlepebble.org with the claim that an asteroid was going to hit Earth this weekend and that four missions that were launched prior to the launch of OSIRIS-REx were secretly intended to knock out this asteroid. And now the claim has morphed into one of success for that deflection, and that will be the excuse as to why the asteroid doesn't wipe out life on Earth by Monday. Nevertheless, LittlePebble.org seems to have responded to my previous video with an updated posting, which reads like a direct response to my video, though they don't seem to mention it specifically. So, let me go through his response to my video point by point. First up, he mentions decoys, and while it's true that in the past the NRO has used decoys, the fact of the matter is that those decoys were still in Earth orbit, just like the spy satellite payload that they were trying to hide. For example, in my previous video, we took a look at the satellites that were launched prior to OSIRIS-REx, and in the last example, we actually saw the final burn that put that satellite into geostationary orbit. We even saw the fuel dump occur from the upper stage of the rocket after the burn was completed, so there's no fuel left then to go hunting asteroids beyond Earth orbit. So let's proceed to his next points. He talks about CCD saturation, and while it's true that CCDs would be saturated if you were using long exposures like you would use at night, fun fact, you can change the exposure setting. It's how I was able to detect objects during the daytime, like the space shuttle Atlantis docked to ISS, for the last time back in 2011. So again, I must point out that if an object is bright enough to be detected by naked eye, it's also bright enough to be detected with a CCD camera, and you can set the exposure of that camera yourself. So lastly, we come to his final point where he defiantly suggests he did provide valid astronomical coordinates, you just have to figure it out with trigonometry. He lists an elevation above the horizon at a particular time and location, though I'm not sure which date he's referring to here, and then he says you have to figure it out using the lunar distance, which is absolute nonsense. This is word salad once again. He's not providing valid astronomical coordinates. He needs to either provide right ascension and declination or a precise altitude and azimuth at a given location and time, although it will only be valid for that location and time. If he wants to tell people how to find it themselves, he's going to have to provide a list of coordinates over time or the orbital elements, which he's not providing. If he claims to know that it's going to hit Earth, that means he has to know the orbital elements in order to make that determination. So, let's see them. I highly doubt he'll post them before the end of the weekend, but if he does, I'll be glad to search the orbit. So let's come back now to the original question about WSO's video. Here, once again, is the explosion, or series of explosions, that they claim to see in Stereo Ahead HI2. Let's take a look at the raw images. So here's my processing of one of the raw FITS files that shows this so-called explosion. It's down at the bottom of the image and shows a faint glow coming from the edge of the field of view. This is actually caused by the diffraction of light of a bright star just outside the field of view, but we're going to identify it using astrometry, solving using the positions of the stars in the image. That's why I didn't do a differential subtraction to get rid of the stars, because we're going to use them to actually determine the coordinates of this flash. So here's the result of the astrometry, and I'll include a link to the astrometry page in the video description. The position of the flash corresponds to the position of a bright star just outside the field of view, Beta Grus. As the field of view grazes the position of that star, you'll occasionally get light diffracting into the view, which is more prominently seen in the running difference images shown on the WSO video. That solves this mystery. Please leave your questions in the comments section and subscribe to Astronomy Live for more. Thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.